Jackson and I am the owner and creator of Sass Queen Bling and today I'm going to show y'all how to make a split candy cane cup. I'm kind of getting away from being in the fall mood. <laughs> now I'm in the Christmas mood. But anyways, it's going to be a split cup with a candy cane on one side and I don't know about the other side yet. This is just my idea. It's really not set in stone. I'm just winging this. <laughs> but anyway, and I think I'm going to make a topper for it. So this ought to be fun. Let's go! So I'm using a 32 ounce tumbler from Steel Magnolia. And I already sanded it with a 60 grit sanding block and then wiped it down with alcohol and spray painted it flat white with Rust-Oleum two times. And now I'm going to take electrical tape and wrap it around to make the candy cane that I'm wanting to put on one side. And I'm not using any particular measurement. I'm just eyeballing where I want to put these. And where I'm putting the electrical tape will be what will be white on the candy cane and the rest of the cup will be red. I'm just going to paint the remainder of the cup red and I'm just using nice even coats so that I don't get any dripping in the paint and I want to make sure I get around this electrical tape um, really well also and that that's good and covered. I'll list the name of this paint in the description box below. It's a Krylon paint. Now that I've got it painted, I'm just going to hurry up the drying process <laughs> by using my um, craft heat dryer thingy-majiggy. I don't know. Some people call it a blow dryer, but it's not a blow dryer. It's a craft gun. <laughs> I'm just going to speed up the process because I don't have the patience to wait, and I want to get the glitter on this red. So I've already mixed up five milliliters of epoxy. I'm going to apply to my cup so that I can apply the uh, red glitter on it. And I usually just use, I mix up five milliliters, but I never use all of that. And my cup is already warm for me drying it with the dryer. So the epoxy goes on smoothly. Um, whenever, if you use epoxy to apply your glitter, it's always best to warm the cup up so that the epoxy will just slide on it and you're not using too much epoxy but just enough to apply your glitter and you just want to make sure you have a good even coat a thin even coat and i've left the electrical tape on because i want those spots to be white and i'm going to apply my glitter and then i will pull that tape to reveal the white and I'll have good crisp lines with my red glitter when I do that because I'm epoxying it now. going to apply my red glitter. I'm using Boiling Mad Junior from Mr. Nola's Glitter. It's absolutely gorgeous. I don't know why I didn't order this red much sooner, but I ordered it just to do this cup and I thought, oh my, it's so pretty. It's a really, really pretty red. 
and I'm just gonna apply good even coverage. I'm gonna make sure I get full coverage on here. With doing the epoxy method, it's pretty simple to get a good full coverage. And because I've painted the cup red, anytime you wanna get good full coverage on a cup, always paint the cup a similar color to the glitter that you're going to use. And I'm just gonna make sure I get the top really well and everything in between. And the, I wanna get the bottom. And that looks good. Now I'm ready to pull the tape to reveal the white where I'm gonna put the white glitter. Don't worry if any paint pulls up in this process because you can fix that before you lay down your white glitter. After I pull this tape, I will let this epoxy sit for a few hours and then I'm going to spray the red really well with Rust-Oleum 3 times clear spray to seal that so that when I do my white glitter, I don't have any issues with rogue glitter traveling where I don't want it. And also it will make it easier for me to brush that red off, any white that I get on that red, because it will be sealed. So while I let that dry, I'm going to work on my lid. I do want to give a shout out to Myra Makes It because I was inspired to make this topper by one of her YouTube videos that she did. She did a topper um, for Halloween and it was so stinking cute. And I did one for Halloween also. And then I saw these elf legs and I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta do one for Christmas because it's so freaking cute. So shout out to her and thank you so much for all the tutorials that you post. So I'm just um, taping off with painter's tape the holes underneath the lid because I don't want anything to leak under there while I'm working on this, any hot glue or epoxy. And I did take the top slider off of my lid because I'm not gonna need that. I'm just going to use a straw to drink out of this. So I just need the straw hole. Now I'm gonna fill the whole lid with hot glue because that's gonna help me not use so much epoxy when I'm filling this. So I'm gonna fill it with hot glue and then I will just decorate the top with my epoxy and seal it with epoxy. And because I have this little rinky dink, <laughs> no good hot glue gun, it's going to take me a while. So I'm going to fast forward through that so y'all don't have to watch um, me with this ratchet hot glue gun <laughs> that I have. I used my hot glue gun when I did a drip on a Halloween cup with black hot glue. And so that's why it looks like I have a little bit of blackish gray in there because um, I tried to drain that out, but I couldn't get it all out. So anyways, it's no big deal because you're not going to see it once I put the white marshmallow topping on here. But anyways, I got these elf legs and hat off of Etsy and I'll list that link in the description box below. They're so stinking cute. They have these little stakes on them and I want to cut those off. And um, the hat actually has a real bell on it. It's so freaking cute. But I want to cut these stakes off and I just use a little piece of that stake on there. I leave a little piece of that on there because I'm going to stick that down in the hot glue but i'm just using these handy dandy cutters i don't even know what they're called but they're cutters that i stole from my husband a while back and i'm just going to cut these off and see i'm just leaving a little stem on there that i'm going to stick down in the hot glue 
and it's real easy to cut them with these cutter to cut with these cutters um, those are actually necessary because I don't think you could cut those off with scissors now I just want to see where I'm gonna place the legs I think these are gonna look really cute just facing backwards like the elf fell in to the marshmallow topping but I just want to see where I'm going to put them before I hot glue those down and then I can't move them around. I get the legs in I just go around the bottom part of it with some hot glue because I want to make sure I, I have that good in place and it's not moving around when I go to put my topping on here so I'm just going just a thin layer of hot glue just completely around the bottom of the legs and I'll do the same with the hat when I lay the hat <laughs> these half pearls off of Amazon a long while back like I've had them forever I'll try to see if I have the link to it still but I'm gonna put those on here because I thought it would give it the look of like melted marshmallows melting down but actually later on you will see that when I put the topping on there that they kind of get lost in here so I don't recommend it unless you're gonna really stack your glue up higher um, if you're going to do what I would recommend, stacking the hot glue up a little higher and then putting those on. But anyways, it was a cute idea while it lasted. Okay, so I've got that part done. I'm just going to set that aside and I'm going to go ahead and put my white glitter on the white strips since the cup is dry now. And I'm going to use Tack It because it's just really easy to work with. And um, I couldn't find my angle brush, so I'm just using a small regular paintbrush to paint the Tack It on. And just be really sure that you kind of stay along the red glitter line and don't go over that. Um, because if you get that on there, it's kind of hard to get that off and you just don't want to create drama <laughs> with, with the glitter. So just kind of stay within. Um, any, it's, does, it doesn't have to be perfect because um, I'm going to come back and put accent stripes on here with nail um, fingernail tape. Sorry, my brain is not with me right now with nail tape uh, and so any imperfections will really be able to be covered with that and you won't really notice it but just do the best you can to stay within the lines and I'm just gonna go ahead and do all these white sections and then I'll be ready to put my glitter on and I like to use Tack It because Mod Podge dries so fast, I wouldn't have time to go through and I to go through and do all the stripes. I would have to do one and then glitter, and I would just rather go through and put all my glue on and then glitter. So that's why I chose to use Tack It.
white glitter i'm using west bank jr also from mr noah's glitter and i will list that in the description box below as well i'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle my white glitter on my white spots and i'm not worried about any that lands on that red because i've already sealed it three times with rust-oleum clear type uh, rust-oleum two times clear spray so i'll be able to brush those areas off with my chip brush or a small paintbrush get done with my white glitter I seal it again with rust-oleum two times clear spray I seal it three times and let that dry and now I'm ready to epoxy um, I've mixed up 30 milliliters of epoxy and I added a little bit of Mr. Nola's snow day in that and I'll list that in the description box below also and it probably won't take this 30 milliliters, but I just mixed that up because I have other cups I'm working on so I can use it on any of those. But you want to do nice thin coats. I will probably do two small, um, two light thin coats because I want to have this smooth for me to put the nail tape on. But I mean, you want to do thin layers because you can always come back and put more if you need to, but you can't take it off once you've put it on there unless you strip the cup. So less is better to work with. So I'm gonna apply these and then I will let it sit and dry for 12 hours and then I'll be ready to come back and add my accent stripes. going to use my sanding block and sand down really well try to be careful around your edges because you don't want to um, reveal that stainless steel under there so I try to be gentle around that but you want to sand it down the best you can so that it's smooth for you to apply the vinyl or nail tape or whatever you choose to use and I'm using a, well, I think this is a 120 grit sanding block. It doesn't have the number on it like they normally do, but that's usually what I have on hand to sand. And I want to get around the rim really well. It's not going to really matter because I'm going to have a drip on there, but it's just a habit of me sanding that. And it just makes me feel better to just go ahead and do that. And I like to reveal that a small thin line of stainless steel around that rim just so I get a good seal when I do my final layers of epoxy. <music> Thank you. 
after I sanded the cup, I wiped it down really well with alcohol. And now I'm gonna apply my nail tape. I got this nail tape off of Amazon a long while back. It was in a variety pack. Um, they have a lot of variety packs on there to choose from. So they sell texture or um, plain nail tape. And if you get the variety pack, you get different ones in there. And I just like that because it gives me more choices. Make sure you have a sharp blade on your craft knife because it makes it easier to trim this off when you go to apply it. I'm just going to apply the red nail tape down the white spot, down the white spaces of glitter to create the candy cane look. And then I'll come back and put the white nail tape along the red glitter lines. And this, the ones along the red glitter line will help cover up any flaws that may have been created um, when I was glittering. And whenever I trim my nail tape, I like to trim it just above and below the rim because it makes it easier whenever I go back to epoxy. I don't want to have um, any issues with that at the edges of the cup. I'm loving this cup already love 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 it um, whenever you do this it's kind of hard to get a really good twist on a curved cup so that's why I use the electrical tape and I don't have it as twisty as I would like it but I mean it's okay I still love it it's still adorable but that's why it's not as twisty because it's a curved cup now I've decided that I'm gonna seal this with Mod Podge, seal my um, nail tape, because I wanna go ahead and do my drip on the cup, and I wanna seal this nail tape so that I don't mess that up while I'm working with the cup. And I didn't wanna do another layer of epoxy right now because I don't wanna to get too much, too many layers of epoxy on my cup, even though I do light layers. I just don't wanna cause any issues so I'm just gonna seal it and let that dry and then I'll go ahead and do my drip Before I do my drip, I want to go ahead and put my decal on because I want to know where I'm going to have that and be able to do the drip around that. I'm using a decal that I got from Crafty Thriving. It's some of her new decals that she have that are AB, so you can put those on any surface and they're going to show up. They're not the clear cast, they're AB cast. Um, this is so freaking cute but i want to go ahead and put that on there before i do the drip so that i can do the drip around that and not go ahead and do the drip and then have the drip in the way of anywhere that i need to put the decal so just trying to think ahead <laughs> i'm going to go ahead and cut around the edges of this because i like to have a good clean edge that i just cut before i apply my decal and I'm just gonna um, trim close 
to the picture, um, be careful not to cut into your photo. Anyway, I'm just going to trim that off and then I'll apply it where I want it at on the cup. Because this is a 32 ounce from Steel Magnolia, it has a really good top size to work with because the top of this cup is longer than like your regular 30 ounce tumbler. So you have a lot more room to work with. So I'll be able to put this decal in a nice area and then still have a good size drip at the top. So I just kind of want to see where I want to put my decal. I know that I want to leave space at the top for um, the drip, so I'm going to bring my decal down just a little bit. This decal has a backing on it. You just want to separate it. I separate it, and then I will trim a piece of the backing off so that I can kind of do the hinge method when I'm applying the decal so that it doesn't stick to the cup in a place that I don't want it and then it is stuck there. <laughs> um, Crafty Thriving's decals are pretty easy to work with. You can kind of maneuver them and move them around and sometimes you can lift them up with no issues also off of the epoxy. But anyways, I think I got a perfect spot here where I want this at. So cute. This label has elf made on it and that was why I chose that because it matches the elf legs and hat that I'm gonna put on. So elf made I thought was just freaking adorable for this cup. You just wanna make sure that you press out from the center there to the edge of the decal. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm just gonna press from the center out toward the other edge, just so I don't get any air bubbles under there and get it laid nice and smoothly. But this is so much easier to work with than water slide. Look at that, oh my gosh, isn't that cute? so cute and that's where it says elf made right there so adorable I'm just making sure I don't have any air bubbles in there and now I'm ready to do my drip yay I'm sorry for the rattling, y'all. My little dog, he just decides that he's going to drink his water at the most inconvenient times. <laughs> and he drinks out of a hamster bottle instead of a bowl because he gets it up his nose so bad. And that's why the rattling. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, I've already mixed up my epoxy for my drip and my um, topper. I mixed up 35 milliliters and I've split it because I'm gonna use this nice and thick from counterculture and I wanna have enough room in the cup so it's not spilling over when I'm trying to mix it. With this nice and thick, you just, you have to eye it. So I add some, mix it, add some, mix it until I get the consistency that I want. And this is gonna give you the thickness that you want in the drip. And I'll list the link for that in the description box below. So I just mix it and mix it and mix it until I get the consistency I want. I want to add a little bit of white acrylic paint to this because it's kind of a look, even though I put that nice and thick in there, it's still translucent because that's not a colorant. 
So I'm gonna add a little bit of white acrylic paint because I want my drip to be like the marshmallows spilling out, marshmallow topping spilling over. So I want it to be white. Um, do not add as much acrylic paint as I did because it does get a little more stringier than I like and it's a little bit hard to work with. But you just need a drop of the acrylic paint to get the white that you want. And then just mix that up really well. And then you'll be ready to apply it. Um, I try to drip that around the edge with the cup standing up, but I'm not great at that. So you will see that I wound up putting mine on the turner because it's easier for me to apply the drip as the cup is turning and then stand the cup up and let it drip down some and then I'll put it back on the turner. But you do lose some of the... Um, drip while you're doing that but I put wax paper down under my cup so that I can scoop any of that off of there and put it back on there if I want to or if I don't need it then it's no biggie it's not on my table and it's on the wax paper and I can just throw that away and so as you can see I'm still trying to get the consistency here that I want and I think I've got it And I'm going to use this on the cup and also on my topper. So first I'm going to do the topper. I'm just using a popsicle stick. I'm just going to apply this um, epoxy mixture on there and you just want to get a nice thin coverage and I bring it out to the edge of the um, lid also and make sure you get around the legs and any crevices in there you just don't want to leave anything exposed so make sure you get it good and covered with a nice thin coat because the epoxy is still going to level out and you don't want to have too much on there and then it starts spilling over as it's leveling out so just push it around drag it around just to get a nice thin full coverage coat without creating a future mess <laughs> for yourself if you get what i'm saying if that makes sense and i just do that around the whole topper and i like to bring it to the edge because it's going to give me like that flowing over look and because the lid is translucent you'll just have that little piece around the outside edge but because the lid is translucent you'll see the white through it and anyways it's just going to be adorable <music> like he fell into the marshmallows so stinking cute now I'm ready to do the drip around the top of the cup and I start by thinking I can do this with the cup standing up but I am not good at that technique sometimes it works for me sometimes it doesn't this is a doesn't moment <laughs> And see, I put too much acrylic paint in there and that's why it's stringy and I've kind of created a little mess here. It, I just take a wipe and wipe that off. Um, 
but I'm going to decide that I'm not going to do it like this. I'm just going to put it on my turner because it's kind of sticky, sticky. If you use less acrylic paint, you don't get so much sticky. Um, you do want it, like this is great because it's not going to drip down so fast on you, but you don't want it where you can't maneuver it so well. And so that's the issue I'm kind of running into. So I'm going to put it on the turner and apply my drip that way. And like I said, you do waste a little bit um, if you don't have wax paper down where you can scoop it up and put it back on. But it's so much easier because you can kind of pour it on instead of having to use the stick. If your drip starts dripping down too fast, just flip the cup over and it'll drip back. This is just a technique. Like If you haven't done it before, um, don't get discouraged. <laughs> It takes a couple of times and to get practice and you get better at it. And as you can see, I've done this quite a few times, but I still struggle sometimes. Like it's just a part of crafting. Nobody's perfect. Nobody does anything perfect. You may watch their videos and it looks like it's perfect, but I promise you everybody is struggling in there in between and they have just taken that part of the video out. So do not give up. Keep going and you'll figure it out as you go. I'm just taking a wipe and wiping off where um, I kind of got a cobwebby mess a second ago. Um, these wipes are just, I bought a big bucket of wipes from Lowe's when the pandemic first started. Um, and I can't remember the name of those, but they're antibacterial wipes and they just come in handy to have in, around the craft room. So I'm going ahead and placing the cup on my turner and now I'm just going to go ahead and apply, use my popsicle stick and apply it. This is so much easier and I'm just going to pour it on here. See I'm losing some as it's going around but it's no big deal. Just don't worry about that right now but I'm able to get this um, going around the cup here and use my popsicle stick to kind of fill in those gaps. And then I will be able to stand the cup up and let that drip down. Yippee! <music> I put it back on the turner and I'm just going to use my heat gun, pop any bubbles. Be really quick and really fast with that because you don't want to burn your epoxy, but just pop any bubbles that are on there um, and just be really quick. I'm probably not as quick as I should be, but anywho, just do your best. Be really quick and fast. And that's that. So cute. Now that I've got that done, um, I'm ready to apply my candies. I got these cute, adorable candies off of Etsy, and I'll list that in the description box below. Um, she has a lot to choose from. Like she has candy canes, chocolate pieces, peppermints, and you can choose different size bags. Like if you just want something small for a small project, or you want to order um, bigger bags to have some on hand for other projects. She has different sizes you can choose from. So, I'll list that in the description box below. So, I'm going to start with applying them to my topper first. There's no rhyme or reason how to put these on. Just more or less of where you want them at, how many you want to put on there. Um, it's personal preference. So, I'm going to put them on the topper first here just placing them all around and then I'm going to put them on the drip of the cup and 
They are so cute. Look at that. So cute. After I got done with the drip, I let that turn for about 12 hours to make sure it's good and dry. And I now I've mixed up 30 milliliters of epoxy and I'm coming back with my last and final layer of epoxy. And after I get done with this layer, I will let this turn for 12 hours and then I'll make sure that the bottom of the cup is smooth or if I need to sand it again, I'll sand it again and then do a very final layer of epoxy. So just do thin layers so you're not getting too much on there and make sure you cover around those candies well. And then that'll be it. To do the topper, I'm just going to use the remaining epoxy I had left from epoxy in the cup because I didn't use all of that. And I'm just using a old paintbrush that I have. You can do that or any disposable paintbrush, any paintbrush you don't mind using and then throwing in the trash. And I'm just going to use it to brush over the top of this topper because I want to brush over all those candies. And... Um, make sure all that's good and sealed in i'm using a brush so that i get a good thin even coverage because epoxy levels out and you don't want to get too much on there and then it's over spilling so it's best to use a brush i feel like and i'm just gonna brush over all of that with really thin layers but enough to seal all this in If you like this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Please remember to subscribe and follow me and also ring that bell so you can get all of my updates. And remember to follow me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest so you don't miss any of my updates or any giveaway, sorry, giveaways or sales that I may have. Thank you to each and every one of you. I appreciate each and every single one of y'all and your support means the world to me. Thank you so much.